For these next two lessons, I have taken my Canson watercolor paper. It's 140 pounds. I like working with the thicker watercolor so that it doesn't bulk up or wrinkle on me as much as the lighter weights. Um, if you don't have the 140 pound, then use the next best thing. Sometimes you can only find the 90 and sometimes only 120, but the 140 is the best in my opinion. And I will put a link to it. You can get it off Amazon. You can get a whole pack of them at a really great price, especially for this series. You're gonna want a lot of watercolor paper. But what I have done for these next two lessons is taken two sheets, nine by 12, and I've cut them in half. Number one, for this lesson, we're gonna be using salt. So I've grabbed some kosher salt. Actually, I didn't grab it from my kitchen. I was gonna say that, but I didn't because I grabbed it from my kitchen years ago and it's been up here. I don't even have a lot left. Um, we're gonna use salt on this and it won't really work with the reusing um, projects that we're gonna do in a later series of mixed media. So if you've done any of the past lessons, I've told you to save your background, save your watercolor. Some of them you may want to frame as its own work of art and some you may want to reuse and I'm going to show you how to do that in an upcoming series. But in this one we're going to put salt on watercolor and you probably are not going to want to reuse it. And then in the next one we're going to do some techniques with some different tools and I just thought it would be nice to have them separate so that's why I've taken two 9 by 12 pieces of paper and cut them in half into 9 by 6. So as I mentioned you're going to need some sort of salt. If you don't have kosher salt that's fine. You can just use regular table salt. I need a little container to put some in. Let's do this over here not above my watercolors or that will be a, whoops, a bad, bad thing. Okay, so that's about a tablespoon of kosher salt. And no, we're not gonna cook. So, for this one, let's see, in the last couple of lessons, I did warm for the wax resist, and I did cool colors for the alcohol resist. And I think I want to stay, since we're using salt, and the ocean is salty, I think I'm going to stay with some greens and blues. Similar to our wax resist, but no purples. So we we're wanting to make this look like a moody ocean. And you actually want to work a lot faster than I'm working. I talk slow and I work slow, but I need to work fast because it's very important to this particular technique. So you can mix them around, mix them with each other, make your moody ocean look if you want to. In the last lesson, I didn't work quite as fast as I needed to because, like I said, I was talking and I was also trying to cover an entire piece of the paper. So, as you can tell, this is quite wet. It's bowed up in the center and it's shiny. It's reflecting the light above. And so now is the time that you put your kosher salt or your table salt or your pink Himalayan salt, whatever kind you want. This just makes some really cool patterns in your wet medium. Do not use your brush over the salt after you've put it on there. Put your brush away and resist the urge to brush those crumbs around. What you can do, however, is let's just, I'm going to take this because you see there's water. If you want to add more color. You could just 
drip that over. That's all the colors mixed to make green. Now I'm obviously working on my studio table where I record art lessons and so it looks like this, but if you're working in the kitchen, you better cover up your table or your mother is going to be very angry with you and me and I do not want her angry with me. Another fun thing you can do is just come in with your water, squirt bottle, and wet it again. If you are doing this on a pad, I actually pulled these off the watercolor pad first so that it wouldn't buckle up the other pages underneath, but obviously it's curving. So if you're working in an art journal, you can use these bulldog clips to clip the pages so that they will lie flat, or you can simply just take some, this one is not the greatest, something like that and just prop them down or set your water bottle on it so that it'll dry a little flatter. But once it's dry and if it's still buckled up, you can just curve it, spread it out. But you just want to be very, very careful with the salt and make sure after everything is dry that you take it over the garbage can and tap it so that any of the salt that is not stuck to the paper that it can just go into the garbage. You do not want this spread all over your table where you're working. All right, so this has dried and I'm just gonna take it and off camera, what I'm gonna do is take a gift card and scrape the excess salt off from it and we'll be right back. All right, so I have scraped it into the garbage can, all of the salt off, or at least most of the salt and I just wanted you to see all of these amazing marks made by the salt and the watercolors. And it really does remind me of like looking at the earth from the sky or a map where some of these darker areas of green are like trees or mountain ranges and then the, you see the blue that could be part of the ocean or ponds or rivers or lakes. So this would be actually something fun to create a map, especially if any of you are writers and you create your own fantasy lands. So you could come back in and add a little bit more detail and create maps this way. Just let the watercolors and the salt create the lay of the land. So it could be a map, you could frame it as just the cool salt resist piece. And I just wanted to show you one of our, and pull you out just a bit. One of our Mixing with the Masters projects, we recreate the Japanese footbridge by Claude Monet. And this one incorporated both the wax resist, we did this, these white lily pads with an wax oil crayon, a white one, and then we added salt to um, actually the pond part and a little bit into the trees. So these are other ways that you can incorporate the wax resist technique, or these obviously was were an oil, so it would be an oil resist, and we'll do that in another lesson. And then of course adding the salt having the salt resist. So I was looking at it and thinking, that looks really familiar. I completely forgot that we did this exact um, technique or several techniques in creating Monet's Japanese footbridge. So I cannot wait to see what you come up with. And also make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss out on our upcoming video lessons.